weekly primer. This is Pastor Chris Thompson back with you again. And we are again getting ready for our Sunday morning service here at Christ Central. Services are 11. You're invited to come if you do not have a church home. If you do, please pour into that place. Make it the best it can possibly be. But if you have nowhere to go, we would love to see you here. We are going to jump right in. We have been in 1 Samuel for a few weeks. And I know Christmas is coming and Thanksgiving is coming. We'll be taking a break for that. But either way, we want to get in on this story. We pick up the story uh, where uh, last week, David and Saul were kind of reunited and things were made right. Well, they have another big blowout and David is on the run. And as we look through this particular story, we come up to a few things. And what I want to start off with this morning is that the fear of people, what people think about you, how people see you, and what people might do to you can sometimes overshadow what God is trying to do in your life. So I'm actually going to start off with a question this week, and that is for you and for me, am I scared of other people in the world or am I really chasing down my faith and letting God do what he's going to do? Well, to launch in, we're going to be starting off in the book of Proverbs. I'll put it on the screen right there so you can follow along. The passage goes like this. Proverbs chapter 22, we're just doing two verses. It says, do not associate with a man given to anger or go with a hot tempered man or you will learn his ways and find a snare for yourself. Now, as we look at this particular passage out of Proverbs, I'm comparing it to David, of course, you may be thinking this is um, the kind of thing you teach an elementary school student or uh, maybe a high school kid who's uh, running with the wrong crowd, if you want to think of it that way. But so much of this relates to our lives as well. See, here in the story, David is running and he's not sure where to go. Now, he's going to wind up going two places. One, is he's going to run to the temple. We'll read that passage momentarily. And then eventually, he's actually going to run um, to the king whom the nation is currently fighting with and ask for help. You see, when he does these things, he's really twisting up what God is doing for him and trying to figure it out on his own. Well, let's jump in and actually give you a little background. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 21 says this. David came to Noab, the Amalekite, the priest, and Amalek, uh, who came trembling to meet David, said, Why are you alone? Why is no one with you? David said to Amalek, uh, the priest, The king has commissioned me with a matter that he said to me, No, uh, let no one know anything about this matter for which I'm sending you, and which I've commissioned you. I've directed the young men to a certain place. Therefore, what do you have on hand? Give me five loaves of bread or whatever can be found. The priest answered David and said, There's no ordinary bread on hand, but there is consecrated bread only if the young men have kept themselves from David or kept themselves from women. And then David goes on to say, Yes, of course they have. By the way, I'm weaponless. Do you have a weapon? And he's actually given the sword uh, that Goliath had carried previously. And I think a couple things to note here. One, is his fear of not only not being able to protect himself has led him to this place. And the second thing is this idea that he was hungry, he was in need. And so he did something that Saul had not asked him to do. We've already mentioned that he was on the run, yet he tells the priest that Saul had sent him on this special mission. It's actually pushed David uh, into a lie, a place where he has to misrepresent what's happening solely because he's scared for himself and the, and the couple of people that are with him. He's scared that he doesn't have um, any way to protect himself and he's got a hungry belly and he makes this rash decision. As I look at this, I can't help but think how many times in my life have I been pushed into a decision, a decision that is going to reverberate throughout the rest of my life based on my immediate circumstances. If you're any thing like me. What's happening right now is so huge compared to what could be happening later. How many times 
have I destroyed the testimony God wanted me to have around people or the place he wanted me to be because I got scared. If you have social anxiety or if you have um, financial embarrassment of some sort, you may be making decisions that are not exactly what God would have based solely on the fear of the people around you um, or your circumstances. And I want to encourage you as I'm attempting to encourage myself to look at the greater good of all things. You see, David is going to launch from this part of his life and begin some decisions that are good and some decisions that are bad. But these choices right now reverberate through his entire kingship. And we will see that as we study that history. And the same thing is true for you and the same thing is true for me. Decisions we make today reverberate through till the end of your life. So please, this week, along with me, let's attempt to not only be thankful for the upcoming holiday season, but actually consider what God would have for us long term, even if where we're at right now is not as desirable as it might be. Well, that is our devotional for this week. We hope that you will show up on Sunday and get the end of this story. God bless, and we will see you next week.